Altimeters work by measuring the difference between sea level pressure and the pressure at the current altitude one is flying at. This measurement of the weight of the air comes in via the static line. For every 1,000 feet gained in altitude from sea level, there is a 1 inch drop of mercury. So if sea level pressure is at 30 inches of mercury, at 1,000 feet the pressure will be 29 inches of mercury, at 2,000 feet 28 inches of mercury, and so on. However, pressure isn't always constant but changes such as when flying from low pressure to high pressure areas and vice versa. You can calibrate what is displayed on the altimeter by using the knob to control what is displayed in the Colesman window. So if the pressure changes from 30 to 30.10, you can calibrate the altimeter by setting the Colesman window to 30.10. Changing the setting causes the hands on the altimeter to rotate to reflect the new setting which keeps the altimeter setting accurate. You can get the information you need to make the setting from flight service stations, from automated weather options such as ATIS, AWOS, or ASOS. Here's an example of how this would sound listening to ATIS at the Spirit of St. Louis Airport. Sky clear below 1 2000, temperature minus 1 5, dew point minus 2 2, altimeter 3082. So we see from this example the altimeter would be set to 30.82. If for some reason you can't get the altimeter setting from other sources, you can always request it from air traffic control. Do so by saying the following. Spirit Tower, Cessna November 2095 Kilo, 10 miles to the northwest at 5,000 feet, requesting altimeter setting. The tower will respond with something like the following. Altimeter setting is 3012. You can get the altimeter setting in another way if you are still at the airport. Before you take off, set the altimeter to match the airport's elevation. So if I'm at St. Clair Regional Airport, I can see that the elevation is 656 feet and I can turn the knob until my altimeter reads 656 feet. A good practice is to update the altimeter setting at least every 100 miles of flight if not more often. If you don't keep the setting accurate, you will be flying higher or lower than where you think you will be flying. To emphasize this point, let's say the pressure at area A is 30 inches of mercury at sea level. Now for area B, the pressure is 29 inches. For every 1,000 feet, the pressure drops an inch, so we have the following up to 3,000 feet. Now let's say you plan to fly at 2,000 feet from area A to area B. At area A, you have the altimeter set to 30 inches of mercury, which means at 2,000 feet, you are at 28 inches of mercury. You fly to area B, but don't update your altimeter. You still think you are flying at 2,000 feet, but at area B, you are only flying at 1,000 feet because 28 inches of mercury corresponds to 1,000 feet at area B. You are 1,000 feet lower than where you think you are and don't even know it. Not good if there are obstacles ahead of you. To make the altimeter even more accurate, you correct also for non-standard temperature variations. Normal variations in temperature produce small errors in altimeter readings. In reality, most pilots don't correct for these variations, but in extreme conditions, you would want to consider doing so by using a flight computer to help with these calculations. The higher the temperature is over the standard 59 degree sea level reading, the higher your altitude will be over the actual altimeter reading. The more the temperature is below 59 degrees, the lower your true altitude will be below the altimeter reading. When performance charts are created, they are created on what's called the standard day, which is 59 degrees at sea level and with a 29.92 inches of mercury reading. But what if your conditions vary from that? The pressure altitude column is the altitude at 29.92 inches of mercury as I just mentioned. So if you set your Colesman to 29.92 when flying, you will know the pressure altitude. After you look at the chart, just set the knob back to the correct setting you had before making the change. Subscribe to this channel to learn more.